November uh, meeting of the Bond Oversight Committee to order. We've taken attendance. Uh, we have a quorum. I would like to do a couple of housekeeping matters first. So let's move uh, eight new business up to the front right now. Uh, we need to, pursuant to the bylaws, we need to form a committee for nominations for uh, officers for the next year. Uh, if I remember the bylaws correctly, I don't have a copy of them in front of me. Uh, the nominating committee needs to nominate in December uh, so that the new slate of officers can take office January 1 or the first meeting in January. Um, so we, what we need to do is, and let's go ahead, we'll... Before you go, Mike, sure. I just have a question. Uh, the election is not going to going to be set up later, I understand, it's going to be extended another year. The, the, the board members, because they're supposed to be appointing somebody after the election or reappointing the individuals that's supposed to. So we're not going to have any, the reason we set it up that way was because these individuals, the new ones that came on board after an election, would have the appointments done before the committee was done. So actually we didn't have an election. It should have been done. We're going to have an election in November of 08. Okay. The bylaws, however, that was for tenure on the on the committee itself, not for tenure as an officer. So, in other words, uh, <clears throat> the way it was set up in the bylaws was you would be, or an individual member would be up for either reappointment by the board member who appointed him or uh, a selection of a new board uh, committee member by that board member in the year and in the month that the election of that board member was to take place. School board member, trustee. Right. Uh, so there are no vacancies coming about on the committee as a result of election because the elections have been moved to November of 08. That's correct. However, with respect to vacancies on the slate of officers, uh, we do need to have a nominating committee uh, appointed in order to have an election for officers beginning of the new year because the tenure as an officer was only for one year. Okay. We have, we're going we're gonna to put the nominating committee on to come back in December to, to come back with a name for the officers to take over in January. Correct. My only concern is that we have some vacancies, you know, that the board has not has not appointed, whether it's to the, you know, to, or notify the superintendent or whatever the situation of the vacancies that are that are missing. Uh, Mr. Sanchez, I think there is only one vacancy at this point in time, correct? That's correct. Okay, I stand corrected. And that's yes. Mr. That's Terry Ray's position. That's correct. Okay, and, uh, and the uh, other appointees are or the superintendents. Correct. So, we originally we, we had what thirteen members? Seventeen, right? Fifteen or something? Seventeen. 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 So there, you know, we we do have, and I, I think I don't have those who appointed who to. Mr. Aguilar needs to appoint Mr. Ray. I believe he's the one who appointed. But he's the one. Okay. What about in, anybody else that was appointed by one of the board members? What? One of the things that I, that I noticed that was on there, uh, it, it, it was probably an error. It has a, a, a Mr. Aguilar with three names. It should be the superintendent then, with three. Right. And, and then uh, uh, Mr. Pat Lehman has one. Right. It may have been that one of the three is probably Mr. Lehman, but it, but it needs to be yeah, cause they were corrected so that we know. Two board, two. if I understand correctly, we're supposed to be two uh, nominations from one each board member, which would make it 14 and three for the superintendent. That's correct. So I'm going to go ahead and appoint at this time, uh, unless there's objection, uh, the chair will take its prerogative and appoint Mr. Bar excuse me, Mr. Barbosa, uh, Larry Holtzman, Mr. Farias, and Mr. Evaristo Gomez to the nominating committee for the slate of uh, officers for the new year. And I would like for you all to meet
prior to our next meeting to come up with a list of uh, nominees so that, that that can be voted on at the December meeting to take office on uh, at the first meeting in January. Is there objection to that? Uh, so I don't think we need a motion for that. I think I can appoint a chairman. <clears throat> that concludes the, the new business that I thought we needed to take care of, and I apologize to the presenters, but I thought we needed to get that out of the way before so you guys could then present and then uh, you guys could, could uh, <coughs> move along. Okay, so that moves us now back to the top of the uh, agenda. So we're at number three, the presentation on the master plan and school floor plans for the new elementary school, number 143 and middle school number 12 by PBK Architects. I was going to mention that. Lights, Richard. You can get started, Eli. Good evening. Uh, my name is Eli Alvarado. We're presenting the elementary school number 143 and middle school number 12. Uh, this is similar to our presentation to the board uh, this past month. I want to thank the committee members for allowing us to present this evening. The new elementary school, number 143, is a prototype of Ben Bryant Elementary School, which was elementary school number 140. Uh, we have an estimated budget of uh, $10,500,000. The new middle school, uh, which will be a new design, uh, approximately 135,000 square feet. We have a budget of $20 million for that project. The schedule has changed a little bit. Uh, we are accelerating. The, or moving up the construction documents we're supposed to begin in November. We're working with the administration, uh, getting all the plans and everything ready. So we're actually going to start in January. However, the bidding date in April will not change. So both projects will be bid in April. Yes, sir. Uh, this presentation that you, pre you presented it to us, you know, here in front of us, is there any way that we could be, we'd be able to get a, like a, a, a document yes, where we, we can you know, hand out to everybody on the committee? And you bring in? Hand I don't up. have any. We can, we can follow up with some. Yes, sir. We can use them all. That's all. <laughs> new elementary school and new middle school site plan. It's changed kind of. I think last time we presented to you, we had option one and option two. This is a combination of both. Uh, we're coming off of Alton Glor into our property. Uh, we have two lanes on an entry. Uh, we have separate auto, um, auto drive drop off of the elementary school. And they're free to come around and leave the property or they can come in and drop off at the elementary school, make their way to the middle school and back out to our property. Uh, as we discussed before, we have the bus entry uh, to the north side of the property dropping off at the middle school first, coming around, down to the elementary school, and on its way out. A clear, distinct separation between the auto drop-off and the bus drop-off. Both schools face each other, both entries, uh, shared visitor parking here in the front, and the place room for the middle school out here, and the elementary school on the south end. One thing that has changed, we did receive the survey, uh, preliminary survey from the um, survey group that the district hired. Our site is actually draining this way. I think we have the detention ponds located down here because we thought this would be the south end of our field. So we relocated the detention ponds to the northwest corner and the uh, middle on the southwest corner. The, the, the entry that you have, that is to both, both schools? Yes, sir. And you have a separation, I guess, where you have the, uh, 
Well, you go to the elementary and then you go to the to the middle school. That is correct. Yes, at, at at what point is that is that where that we had? Yes, sir. There. Right now, what we have we are going to have some prayer gates here. That way, we can get people off the knocking door if they need to make the turnaround. Not really wanting to come into our property, they can turn around and come back out. Uh, but the gate system is the entry for the elementary school. At this point, if they don't have any uh, um, children at the elementary school, they can proceed forward, go to the middle school, and come back around. And in the in the middle school, I mean the elementary school, their ride is going to be right where the there's going to be a crossbar there, where you go to the middle and you go to the, you're going out of the elementary. Right, right there. There's going to be a cross, there crossing of both, both ways. That is correct. Oh, actually, it's, it's, they can come out here, turn left, or they can come to the right this way. We'd have a stop sign and, and sign that you're directing traffic at that point. Uh, did, was that area ever discussed or should be discussed with the, the traffic people? or? We met this morning uh, with them. We're at a, a variety of meetings with the department heads. Um, we met this morning, and this was not an issue with them at that time, no sir. But the site plan and the floor plans were uh, discussed with uh, transportation personnel. Yeah. Yeah. Is there going to be any complaints on this side? Two lanes coming in and two lanes exiting. Same for the for the bus route. Yes, sir. I mean, I'm no I'm no traffic specialist or anything, or claim to be or anything, but. Is there anything wrong or something, to, an idea, bring it up that the traffic should be, if I'm, you know, you look in this way, that the traffic should go in on the, on the left side and the right should go out to, right, to, to try to avoid yes, that cross Are you no, from, from the beginning. There. Yes, sir. Instead of coming on the left as you go in, to go in on the, on the, on the left side rather than the right and bringing the flow in and then going out on the right. To be able to avoid you want, that you want to come in on the top? Correct. No. Typically, when you're coming in, you're coming in on the right end of, of the street and exiting on, on the left. Or you're, you're to the right. That's your standard, the, that's your standard way of doing it. Yes, My question is to you, is there anything that cannot say that you can do it the other way? In order to avoid that crossing where that exit, but then we still have it coming back this way. The no. School, we okay. the school, so have no, because you're going, you're, you'd be going out that way. From the element, when you go to the, if you're going to go to the, to the middle school, from from this top point. Correct. Yes, if, sir. You're going to go to the middle school and you're going to go around. Then you're going to go out, and from the elementary, you're going to go out right there also. Some families have. We don't do it because when you drop off, you could drop off on the passenger side. You have to come in the other way, not not at the driver's side. The kids will have to get in front of the car. That's something that I, you know, I think you're going to have to look at a little bit carefully because it's that you're going to have some kind of control there because that's a lot of, you know, a lot of kids. A lot of congestion here. That's a lot of concern here. Yeah. Well, we'll bring it up again with the transportation when we meet with them. I think I believe in two weeks, and we'll bring up this issue and uh, our next meeting we can discuss that further and see how we. Enough for the bus to drop off, but the enough. The bus will not be in this area. The bus will be. Um, we're, we're separating the uh, auto, oh, automotive drop off from the bus drop off. Two meetings ago, we discussed um, purchasing other property in the top side for the bus lanes. Was there any decision in that? There was a discussion with the uh, uh, BID administration at this time. They have not pursued purchasing the second lot. Any other questions on the site? Yes, sir. I guess uh, when, when you have the school, I guess, at the end of the school day, and you have a lot of traffic that is exiting on FM 3248, is there enough stacking room or, or how does it work for other schools when they're exiting? Does that work pretty good as far as all the traffic? I believe there's a cutoff here. Um, I believe uh, the south portion of the property, uh, students coming from this area are going to be out at an existing elementary school. So most of our students will be from the north side and the east side. 
So they will be all be coming in at this point and exiting to the right there. Also, TechSot will be developing this uh, out in Brewer. It will be extended to, I believe, four lanes. They're going to have a median place in the middle of the two lanes on each end. And uh, we're going to actually have, uh, trying to get a traffic light at that point so we can control access in and out of our property. And if that's the case, uh, would it make sense there at the mouth of the entrance or the exit that would be maybe extended to three lanes instead of two lanes? Yes, sir, we can definitely add a right turn lane or... Just, just to increase the traffic flow. Yes, Thank you. I do not have the exact count, but we're working with uh, the city. The city requires a certain amount of parking spaces for each uh, school, so we will have access to Teachers included. Yes, sir. Any other questions? We're going to the elementary school floor plan. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's a prototype. Uh, main entry off of here. Administration to the right. The library being the heart of the school. A classroom pod. Pre oh, I'm sorry. Pre kinder and kinder on this end. First, second, third, fourth, and fifth graders in these pods. Cafeteria, kitchen, and uh, gym uh, on a separate building. Uh, the bus loop, that's where we drop off on this end, and uh, how is the students there before they go to their classes? Just a note remember, this school, Ben Bright, already exists on South Brown Road. It's going to be identical to that school. So you can actually see this school. Uh, I did take a few, board, a few bond members to go see it. If anybody still wants to go see it, let us know, we'll take you. the teachers and several people that worked in the facility and, and they just commented that they really liked the, the general layout. They were quite pleased, but they had several several recommendations on improvements on sizes of rooms, facilities, no carpet, uh, uh, you know, little things like that, but there's a lot of s small things that could be factored in the well, floor plan layout. The firm is we're giving out a form to the principals, the principals we have to distribute to the teachers to get their input uh, the, the question I had is, uh, have you done that? Have you handed the We're form out? Right okay, you're just starting. Yes, and we did meet, meet today with several, uh, for example, the librarian. She had a few changes that she wants to make, and they're already incorporating that in. Uh, we had a little change in the special ed and uh, on an art science room uh, also that uh, we need to label and uh, take out some carpets to add a sink to make those rooms uh, convert it from what they are in this school. So we, we already started that process with several uh, uh, yeah, departments. Yeah. So this question is not defined properly. Uh, the overall floor plan is um, middle spaces, changing room names, or converting from a classroom to a lab, a computer lab. Um, we're doing that here in the front. Um, mm, pretty much yeah. the outline is pretty much there. For example, the nurse. They don't want carpet, they want tile. So you're not going to see that on this plan. It's going to remain identical. Uh, the librarian, there's no bathroom inside the library. They've got to go outside the hall. So we're going to add a restroom in the library. So that's a small little change you'll see. Uh, so overall, if you look at this plan and the revisions, unless you actually know what was done or changed, you won't know there's a difference on the floor plan design. That is correct. We want to we make sure that many people who are using it just a, a comment, you know, one of the things that we have to early identify is your your computer labs because we are, have to design those rooms with the right air conditioning and cooling and so on. But not only that is all the testing is coming online and we're entering into an agreement to buy, we need about 10,000 computers. so. So we we need to have those designated right up front. So we, once we're, we're telling our campus principals that one you have to solidify, and that's going to be where we're going to be at, and we got to keep it there. And then the highest priority is the high school first, followed by the elementary, followed by the middle schools. That's the sequence of how 
TEA has, has um, uh, dictated that that's how the testing is going to uh, hit the, the districts in terms of doing it online. So just, a, just something that you need to keep in the back of your minds as, as we identify these labs. The middle school floor plan, uh, once again, the main entry, administration to the left for security purposes, library to the right, cafeteria holding areas uh, right off that main hallway, sixth grade pod separate from seventh grade and eighth grade, something that's changed. I believe the floor plan we showed you before had seventh grade downstairs and eighth grade upstairs. Our site allows for uh, a larger area there, so we're able to save a little bit of circulation and cost for elevators and stairwell security and ADA and stuff. So uh, we separated seventh grade would be here in the front, eighth grade house right behind them, uh, fine arts department, uh, and athletic and physical education on the north end. Uh, something that we also worked with from our last meeting are a couple of elevations. Uh, the first round, I'll show an elementary school and the middle school, how they relate to one another. This is a little more uh, contemporary look for the elementary school uh, and the middle school. Then scheme B, uh, a little more traditional, the elementary school, the middle school, and finally a little uh, more modern uh, elementary school and middle school. So it's something that we're still going to discuss. We just wanted to give you all a look to see how they could uh, relate one to the other. And with that, we'll open it for any additional questions. Or Also be adding one by the, by the kitchen, right? And also by the kitchen, the cafeteria for the bus stop. Mr. Alvarado, over on uh, Ben Bright, when I visited it, I noticed that they had some kind of a um, lightning and arrestor system on the building. Lightning protection. Lightning protection. Yes, sir. Is that going to be incorporated yeah, in this one? Also? Is that needed in this area? Um, Every one of the school that we've done has been requested from the school district, so we are incorporating it. It's just one of our standards. Okay. We incorporate that in our project. Thank you. What is it? Lightning. Light. Oh. A little, little metal tower up on top. Oh. Oh. They'll <coughs> shoot the lightning down to the ground, <coughs> like a grounding. If, if, the, if the administrator had not requested it, do you think it's required to have it there? Uh, we, as a firm, we do it one part of our standards, so if it's not. Uh, we would recommend it to a district. So in our in our case, we, we think it is. And is it built high enough for flooding? <laughs> yes, sir, we are, we're working with our civil engineers to get probably a you know, the safest place our students could be is at school rather than at home. I mean, that's the way we're building the shelters. Uh, now we're building with the specs for windstorm because otherwise we can't get insurance. So these, these new facilities are being constructed in that manner. Uh, for the, we need uh, um, shutters and things of this nature. So they're being built solid and strongly recommend those rods, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> Last time we talked about, was this maximum capacity or does the layout have opportunity for expansion? We do have room for expansion on both schools. Um, I believe we were able to add on to the classroom here and to the front as needed. Uh, same on this end as a five month that is typical throughout. And for the middle school, we have uh, capabilities to add to the front here to this pod, to the front to this pod, also to the side. 
right here. And I'll uh, put you in the further analysis. Just a reminder to the committee, the reason we're building the school so we don't have any additional expansion, we want to keep them at 750 and below 1,000 on the middle school. So even though the architects are, are leaving it ready for expansion, we hope that we continue the, the construction program such that we are reducing the enrollments and, and bringing the relief that we need for, we, we, we got to get away from having 1,100 kids uh, at the, in elementary. And that's, that's one of our primary. So we're building campuses, not necessarily because we're overpopulated with students. We have overcrowdedness in our campuses, and it's kind of we're rearranging the furniture, okay? And there is some growth, but, the, but mainly we're rearranging and, and bringing a relief to Iturria, to Ortiz, uh, to uh, Stillman. You know, in that area, that's what we're building over there. And, and, and everywhere we're building our campuses, we're going to bring really needed relief. So that's that's behind, one of the thoughts behind that. And of course, the growth of the community, they're building homes there. So we want to have community schools. So that's some of the thoughts behind that. Just a quick question, Mr. Sanchez. What is the enrollment at Ben Bright right now? And it was built for? So there's still a little bit of room. Okay, so you're still planning on this new elementary school at about 750, 800 students. Good luck. On the middle school and the elementary, are we going to be equipped to the highest technology at the library? Yes, sir. Because okay, that's the future, and especially for the kids to come. That's correct. I believe that we're trying to go wireless throughout the campus, both campuses, but doing the testing, we have to be hardwired because we're not allowed to test uh, on the wireless. So the, the elementary as well? Yes, sir. Awesome. Excellent. <laughs> no further questions. We'll go to the second architect, uh, Mr. Raymond Janak, who's going to present on the elementary 142. Separate the grade levels here, 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 
uh, admin as you come in and dining. So parents and or buses could be dropped off. We, typically we have the dining right next to the buses uh, in an elementary school. However, we understand this school is going to be very low busing. Uh, maybe one or two buses maybe. Special ed buses. Special ed only, okay. Uh, this is a site plan. Um, we have a high level here at the library, a library and the, the dining, uh, the entry, and then we have the mini gym located in fairly close proximity to the uh, uh, academic week. This gives you an idea of the separation. We had at one time we had the pre-K and the K here. Uh, close to the admin, thinking that the kiddo, the younger kiddos, would be better off next to the admin, but the principal told us it was the other way around. They wanted the older, bad kids next to the <laughs> admin, so we switched them. I hope you can see the rest of the resolution on these, uh, and we do have some books to leave with you. But these are the elevations, and this is a response to the facilities committee asking us to. Uh, uh, to try and come up with some regional architecture that had some contemporary elements to it. Um, I don't know if any of you see the McAllen Convention Center that we did. It's, uh, I think that's a response to, to that, which has been very successful. And we've also developed some 3D uh, renderings here for you. Um, this being the drop-off canopy, the entry, academic wings. Uh, the books that we're giving you, we don't like to hand them out before, but everybody <laughs> doesn't look at the screen. <laughs> but the resolution on the elevations is much better. And this is a 3D from uh, a drift screen.
UIL. Uh, it's not a spectator. It's not a, yeah, it's not a right. spectator. And it probably, you know, you're not going to be able to have a high school basketball tournament. One of the things gymnasiums, as long as their gymnasiums are for strictly instructional, they have to qualify strictly instructional, then we can fund them with IFA money. Anytime we go beyond that, we can add, what, 250 seat capacity to 150? Uh, That's all the seating we can have. So if we want to build a regulation gym, we'd have to come up with the difference from local resources. So uh, I think I gave the committee a list of the, the, the projects that are allowed by IFA and those projects that are not allowed. So the gyms, the gymnasiums are basically, as, as were described by Mr. Janek, just a, a covered area uh, where the kids can be away from the sun and um, see men's labs and they do all their exercises. And it's for the, it's we, we did some in McAllen where they, they were just called indoor players. They didn't, they didn't even have basketball hoops for the superintendent at that time didn't want folks being tempted to, to use it for basketball, you know, they use it for indoor and organized games for the kiddos. It's basically for PE classes. PE, yes. Yeah. Yes. There's going to be an outdoor asphalt area with the basketball and the lines on the on the floor, and practice separate from the covered uh, play area. And also, just to make a note, in the 1997 bond issue, we had 30 mini gyms that were built. Every single elementary has a mini gym. We call them mini gyms. So all our new schools now have to have them as well. It's part of our building program. Yes, there's 16 acres here, so uh, you're only seeing about a fifth of the site. You can, you can have playing fields. Uh, not really. Um, I know you mentioned on the buses only two or three buses, but how about the traffic, the flow? Well, you, I mean, you really have, you have as good a situation as you can get for an elementary school because you have two streets to access off. Uh, I think, if I remember the middle school plan I just saw, you only had one street to access, which requires you, as part of your budget, to buy a lot of pavement on your site. Uh, this is really ideal because we have two access and egress, which is well, whenever we do site studies for elementary schools, we try and get that. You can separate buses, carrots, pick up the problem, your In, in this school, in, on a normal elementary school, we have a lot of buses. We separate the buses and the, and the parents pick up, and then, you know, the principal sends the bus kids over here. And the, but since you're not going to have any buses, that's even better because the principal can say, fourth and third and fourth and fifth graders over here, pre-K through two over here. So that way you can have two sets of parents picking up and dropping off, which is all, I mean, it's a, I think it's going to work great. Right. They only need to have two monitors. I've been to the side. Well, I mean, there's not, there's no traffic there. There's only about three or four houses out there now, so it's hard. <laughs> but when, when it does get built up, you're going to have pick up and drop off of the two main streets. It's very, it's very deep into a neighborhood. It's not anywhere near Alton Glor, and all these are going to be walkers and, and a few parents driving. Matter of fact, I don't know if it's truly a gated community, but it's, it looks, it appears to be a gated community. There's a fence along that area. Uh, I don't think it has gates on it. But. Is, is, that, is that where, where, uh, where Elton Gore has Yes, all the way back to the railroad tracks on the back. It's way deep in south. Uh, on the other side of the track.
Oh yeah, the cafeteria is going to have a stage. Um, and, and that's the old, that's the old, uh, that's the manually drawn one. But if you see in the up for where it says common, uh, where the two M's are, that's the dining area, and there's a stage. Okay, so you'll be able to have PTA plays and Christmas plays and that sort of thing. Well, just, and just to take it a step further, uh, this room, I can't read it, but I believe it's music, right? Right, it's music. Uh, and, that, and then we use that because, first of all, that's where the, the music folks will be coming out of it. And they can, they can get to the stage without having to go through the audience. Or if you have a play, the kiddos can get in their costumes right there and then come to the stage without having to go through the audience. You know, you've seen uh, uh, elementary schools where the, the, the characters actually have to come through the audience, so it's not a real big surprise in helping Kurt. And a lot of the schools use their mini gyms for activities and events and meetings and things like that. There, there will be a connecting canopy. Re relative, relatively speaking, it's close. In, in, some, in some schools, we actually have play fields in between the mini gym and the. So it's uh, relative to other schools we've done, it's pretty close. But we don't like them to put them too close because then the noise, uh, the teachers start complaining that it's too noisy from the kids playing. So we keep it just far enough so that it's not a noise problem. Right. And the other thing is, uh, without having to go back to the plan, and I know there's going to be no additions to the school, but if you ever have an addition to the school, it can grow here, it can grow here, 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 here. So we can add, but this, this allows you for a little bit of addition if someday you need to add on to it. No more questions. We'll go to the next presenter. Well, we haven't gotten that far. Typically, we, we do fence them in. I don't know. Well, your your assistant was there earlier in the meetings that you weren't uh, in, the, in the morning, and uh, our police department was there, and our maintenance department, and we do pen, put fences all the way around. Uh, security systems, cameras, uh, gate at. Uh, well, the problem we do is. Um, this is our first school for you, but typically what we'll do is we'll put some nice uh, architectural fencing in this area so it's not prison one in, and then we can, we can do hurricane fence around the rest. We're, we're working on all the elementaries in order to, to get in. you got to go to a gate, buzz in, and, you, and then we have, we're working the budget to have at least one security at each of the elementary campuses. So we're... Where safety is, is paramount. Anything else? Thank you very much. I just want to say, I hope, I mean, if there's any comments on the design of the elevation, this is the direction the facilities committee asked us to go in. And we're, as you can see, we've developed 3D models, so we're going to proceed with, with this architecture. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next presenter, thank you, Mr. Janek. The next presenter will be Mr. Stanford Knowles. We have uh, also under the BOM program wing additions at Hudson Elementary, classroom wings, and classroom wing and library addition at Villanueva Elementary. Uh, this is the first time the classroom wings are going to be presented to either the bond committee or the facilities committee. So you'll be the first to hear these presentations on these small wings. Yeah, uh, we, I want to hand out those uh, drawings. You want to take a... There should be one, too.
We just went straight to, uh, we're going to show you this in the AutoCAD drawings. Uh, we can actually make changes if we will. Part of what I wanted to show you uh, was the, in looking at this, the, the actual two bottom elevations, this particular elevation, which is, would be considered the active thrust from the school joint. I'll show you that in a moment. But I wanted to show you this first in that these, the, it's a long, narrow building, as you can tell. This is actually the front, and from your picture that you've got there, it's probably a lot better than what I'm showing you here. Uh, but the question was whether we go with stucco on the front of the building, or do we actually use uh, limestone, which is what the new uh, classroom wing additions are using. And I say that uh, for two reasons. If I go back to the other file here, <laughs> these are some of the pictures of the campus. Uh, right away, it, you don't see the campus real well from the street. Uh, this is actually from the street, looking back. And it's an old school, it's built in 1935. The three elements at the center, um, where's our pointer here? This element is an entrance. This is the main, uh, this is not even an entrance now. It used to be at one time. And this is an entrance now. Uh, so those three main elements are what we look at. And this is the opposite end of the school. Right here is where we hope to connect the two with, with the driveway. And this is still from the street. Uh, this is from the street. We're looking down one of those long classrooms. Uh, this is an older building. It's hard to show its age. You're going to have problems with the future. Uh, as Oscar and I visited, this is something we hope to, in the future, or BIC hopes to, is take out these portable and this older building, which are all, they're actually undersized. They don't need TA, TA requirements anymore for the size of the classroom. And hopefully you might get a new library there eventually. Um, this is right down the property line, the property line on the right. 
That's the actual property. Some beautiful ebony on that side, right in the middle of the building. Um, uh, I just want to make a note that we bought two and a half acres adjacent to Via Nueva because we were out of land. So that's the new property that she was showing you that we just bought. <laughs> and that's correct. That's the new section we just purchased. Yeah. Um, incidentally, they bought the property from P.G. Cavazos, who I helped design his home some years back. It's some 20 years ago. That's his home. Uh, and I helped put the uh, parish hall in the church 20 years ago, uh, right across the street. But this is actually a new wing. Um, this is limestone at the entrance here, and it, it's brick, uh, flat roof. So this is a side view. There's a question of whether we want big windows like that or we want higher windows. I'll show you that in a moment. This is the back of that same building. This is a, the mini gym, uh, which we did seven, eight years ago for the district. Um, that's the portable we're trying to replace. Back in Egypt, and this is the uh, latest or the newest building on campus, which is classroom wing addition. Um, and it, we're, gonna, we're, we're looking to complement this element here, as you can see by the elevation. So we hope to complement, but at the same time, pick up on some history of the, of the school with that front. This is the rear of that classroom wing addition. Um, it, it, it's a good use of brick, limestone and uh, inset entry, uh, flat roof. It'll do the job for what we're trying to do. This is the actual back of the building. That fence on the opposite side of the fence is where we'll put the new building. Um, that's the same going the other direction. One was looking, the other looking north is looking south from the same location. Uh, this is the interior. I'm not sure we want to go with pastels, but we'll work on that. Um, that's an entrance to a classroom. It's a little tight in here. We're going to open that up and you'll, you'll see what we're talking about. This is that element that I wanted to show you for the front of the building. Uh, I'd like to reflect on that. Uh, you know, the history of the campus being 1935, uh, a lot of us do like to maintain the history of Brownsville, and, and I think this would be a nice compliment. Uh, and, and as you can see on the elevation, uh, if we go back to that elevation, we've actually got uh, in our elevation the uh, I'll go back to that other one we, we've got we go back to that elevation you see I actually enlarged that front entrance and this will actually be the library. <coughs> now, with that said, what I'd like to show you is the floor plan. And the second page, I'm going backwards from the site, actually. Why don't we go back? It, 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 should we, I don't know if you want to see it from the site or from the site, uh, from the, uh, let's go back, let's go down to the site. This is actually the site. Uh, the blue line outlines the additional property that was purchased. Uh, the survey we got was only a part of the campus. The building, the old building from 1935 is down here on the bottom. There actually should be an insert in there. We're looking to add uh, parking at the front of the building. I'll zoom in here a little closer. Um, if we zoom in here a little closer, you'll see the, what we're trying to provide. This would be the entrance off the military highway. We have parking on either side. Uh, truck, uh, cars can come through, buses, whatever. Then we'll take this, this line here. And I don't have a good site plan or a good survey that connects that yet. And we've asked, we've asked for that. This would connect to the existing parking, so that actually be a drive through. Uh, and this would be our main entrance into the class, into the library, through the side here, or, and this would be for evening events, so on and so forth. The main drop-off I expect to continue at, at the front of the school. The bus is actually coming down on the bottom of the campus. Well, let me ask, military highway, is that on the back? It's on the back. It's at the back. The campus actually has a one-way system through the campus. The, uh, there's, a, there's actually a drive that comes through here 
It's a one-way drive. There's supposed to be for buses only and staff parking. Military highway, they, they come in from military from the old military highway, which is this street up here, and they actually exit onto the new military highway. So new, new military highways here at the back. The school is actually oriented to the old, the actual old military highway, which is some, what, 50, 60 years ago that they changed, or was it 30 years ago, I guess it was? 50, 60 years ago, this was the front, was the old, that was military highway, okay? Now, some 30 years ago, they moved military highway here. there's no real traffic on the road. No, sir. Uh, they try to avoid traffic on the military highway, only for exits for buses during drop-off. And they, they actually exit on the opposite side, of, enter, enter and exit on the opposite side of the campus. The public drop-off for children from automobile traffic is on the old military highway, so there's very little traffic. So we don't really have a traffic problem. Which is in, in the town of San Pedro, the little community of San Pedro. Yeah, yeah which is growing in leaps and bounds. Um, We're adding this building in white. Uh, this, there's the one story building that I showed you, which is the latest building that's built, is right here. And I'm, I'm showing you on the campus here. This is the new building. It's 12 classrooms. Uh, it has a science lab, a computer lab, uh, a restroom block, and then this is all the library with their, uh, this is a, a multi-task room. There's a restroom off of that room. There's the, uh, Rest of the librarian's office here. Uh, right, let me get into that file. And the expansion is covered exactly how many students are there? Yeah. Hmm? The expansion covers how many students are there? We've got uh, 12, let's see, we've got 12 classrooms. So 12 classrooms times an average of 25 students per classroom. These are all upper, well, second and third grade is what they're looking for. Yes, sir? Is this uh, building going to replace those uh, eight portable buildings? That's the intent. Uh, Are they going to be that? Right now, the, the uh, campus has some 463 students, I think. Uh, they expect that to be increased by a hundredfold every year for the next five years. Is that correct, Oscar? Yes, we'll get rid of all the portables when we open this up, but I already know that they may want to keep two or three, so eventually we're going to have to build another wing because this, this school is very small and that area is growing uh, really large. Uh, either that or we're even talking about some little bit north of this community uh, building another elementary school when this one starts outgrowing its small site. It's, it's got a very small campus. That's the intention. That's the intention. To, to replace the portables, yes. So the strategy right now is just to have a way that not been a matching plan for future okay. our, our instruction is a wing only and some parking in the front. Beyond that, this is our task. Uh, so we're going to a smaller job. So the idea is that if this school is going to continue growing, ideally it would be nice to have a little bit of a better matching plan. Right. Well, we have three. New, well, we have two newer classroom buildings, and we have, of course, the older existing building, which would be in the front, which essentially would be administration. Uh, as explained, uh, we would like to complement the, old, the oldest building, which we expect to stay for historical reasons, and it's a good administration building, and complement the two wings that have been installed. Um, on your question on the master planning, we have worked on that. Um, it's just that we ran out of bond money to do more. What we're doing here is this building is on the northwest section, and it includes a library. The library is way on the opposite side of the campus, which we don't like to do. We like to have the libraries in the center, so everybody has equal a distance access from pre-K to, to fifth grade. But we don't have room to build the library anywhere in there because there's a whole bunch of portables and little wings inside the middle there around the courtyard. So I already talked to Mr. Knowles that when we're designing this, and keeping in, in, in the thinking of the future and the master plan is that this wing here, if we're designing it, designing it in a way that this library, uh, when this wing is done and we take out all those portables from the interior of the school, in the future I want to project an, an, a library like we did at Vermillion 
a standalone library in the middle of the campus where it should be, and then this library is going to be converted into three classrooms or two classrooms on either side, which will, will gain four additional classrooms here. So in a way, this is a temporary library, maybe here three, four, five, six years, but when we get monies, new monies for the new library, we'll convert those to classrooms and, and, and master plan that. We also, once we remove uh, an old lunchroom, double portable, we plan to expand the, the, the kitchen, which is the dining, which is only half of what we really need. So we've, we've thought about that over 10, 12, 15 years, but after this bond, when will we get our additional funds? I'm drawing a line right here in the middle. Uh, if, if you look at this, this is actually set up. By the time, if we extend the corridor, we can, you can see one, two, three, four classrooms. Those are actually, those are actually larger classrooms. Because of the requirements of, uh, from the TEA on the library side, those classrooms would equal the science and computer rooms. So they're rather large, they're nice classrooms. Uh, and then, of course, the offices here and whatever, uh, those could be for other purposes. Uh, but you, we do have plenty of room for four good sized classrooms in the future. This is the section, second option that we provided for the library. This is one we did. Uh, we have a checkout. We have 15 computers here. This is a glass wall. Uh, there's actually a reference table here with four computers. And this is an open area where we actually have an AV set up. So we have a screen and an AV above the ceiling. Uh, and this is a library workroom, which over here we call a, another, another type of name. This is, we've done this already three times for the Stroke School District. And it's worked very well. We're very happy with it. We just finished uh, the Real Elementary Library in Omita. Uh, This particular one is uh, yes, 1.3 on Hudson and 2.2 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2 or 2.4, something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is only 2.2 2. 2 for this particular campus. So when you do the expansion, is it just, just uh, internal wall work, or are you going to have to see if there's the addition in the future? Is that all taken care of? Oh, no, when we, when we have four classrooms here, yeah. it's it's basically wall, yes. Uh, very, yeah, it's very easy interior work. It's, being a library, it's, it's a big open shell, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, uh, um, right here, if, if you will, in the picture there, that is the entrance to the library, which I pointed out to you, as to whether that might be stucco or be limestone. Uh, I'm leaning towards stucco. And I'd uh, like to get your input. So this is something we'd like to hear from you, whether you want the limestone or the stucco. The stucco is what is on the old building, the original school. Um, I like the idea of the brick because brick holds up better than, we, than stucco normally. Uh, the limestone also, if it's in this case, this entrance does face north. And when it faces north, limestone has a, a more uh, water problems in the sense that all of the cracks, nicks, and crannies and crevices are going to get a little mold growth and it's going to grow. Uh, I think we can maintain stuff over there. Okay, guys, we're, we are in a tight time schedule. We need to move on because you got another school to present, and then the next architect has four schools to present. So let's uh, try to wrap it up. <laughs> He'll be quicker than me. I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson, to get to this movie. Hudson is fairly simple uh, in the sense that this is the existing site for Hudson. And as you can see, uh, this is the site plan. This is the new wing. Right now, there's just a wall right here. And they've got all these extra classrooms out here. These are all the portables we hope to remove some of uh, with the budget again. I hope we remove all of them. Th those portables are double classrooms. So those 10 buildings are 20 classrooms. About 500 kids uh, strictly in portables at Hudson Elementary. And, and on Oscar's behalf, part of this is twofold. Moving out these portables is not such a big task when you realize that you've got a new elementary school that's going to take some of this population. Okay. When did Hudson was made? It opened in 2001, maybe six, seven years ago.
Yeah, my, my uh, colleague team, uh, and team member, Calvin Walker, designed Hudson. So we're using the same uh, plan layout. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here. He's doing a new school in Monterey. You have in the handout, the look for the one that says Hudson, and that's uh, the one that he's showing you right now. Questions for Mr. Knowles? Okay, thank you. We'll turn it over to the last presenter, Mr. Hector Garcia with Garcia, Mata Villarreal Garcia Architects. Uh, they're going to present small wings at Egli Elementary, Palm Grove, um, Eg Egli Palm Grove, Perez Elementary, and Canales Elementary.
We can take out five of those double portable machines, and then when we build, there's two other elementary we're building out of local money, okay. and those open up, it will go eight eight back down to 800, eight. and they'll all fit in the Robin Hood, uh, Windcrest, and Allendale. 
The main entrance to the school is right here. Administration, library is here. This is the cafeteria with the kitchen. There's a, a parking area and a drop-off area here. Then you can see the, the wings that are here are permanent. And then you see the portable buildings that have been inserted. And there's some additional buildings in here. The, the mini gym is back here. So the goal was that uh, in meeting with the principal and administration, the goal was to set the, the new wing in this area. Okay. So we've laid out the classroom wing here to where the classes would work off of this long canopy walkway here and attach. And being that this is fourth and fifth grade, we would uh, place them here and then place the, the restroom areas and then the, uh, the, the library in that space. Mr. Tapia had some concerns. We've addressed them with the principal and we showed her different options and this is the one that she selected that would be the most uh, beneficial to her campus. Now, the reason we also shaped it in this way was that, uh, is that future bond issues or future growth in renovating this campus, that this is the wing that we're doing, that there would be an early childhood wing placed up here, administration, we would bring in the parking and the drop off off of Robin Hood in here, get everything away from Oliveira, uh, establish a new cafeteria kitchen here with the delivery area off of Windcrest, keep the gym here, and then as the wings were replaced, instead of single loaded open air wings, we would have a double loaded quarter. So eventually, this quarter here would be the main hall and the entire campus would be indoor. So that's the goal that, uh, a master plan that you can and, and all the buildings on the left would be demolished. And the, the buildings in here, oh. yeah, and to the left would be continued demolished as, as the campus would grow uh, in this area. Uh, here's some shots of the existing, you see the walkway, the, the concrete columns, uh, the, the uh, concrete block building, all of the windows have uh, solid plastic, uh, just translucent panels on them. Uh, these I think were built around the late, middle to late 70s. Uh, some of them earlier were the, the concrete columns and then the block infill. And then the cap this is the kitchen area, the, the service drive that we saw. And basically this is the front door, this is what faces only beta. So as things are replaced, we would like to give the front of the school a, a better look. And so being that we're working with that, we have a dark uh, brick and then uh, there's a, a hot uh, what is a hodgepodge of, of materials out there. And so we chose the dark brown brick that's out there as our theme to try and keep some relationship and complement uh, what's there and say, well, you know, we're tying to what's there because we don't know how long it'll be between phases. So we're using the, the dark brown brick as access and then we're using the block of which there's block there to, in, in two forms. We're using a smooth uh, face block of a certain color and then we're proposing a split face block which would give it some texture as well, especially along the bottom here. As you see the bay windows out of each room and then the accent with the bridge. Uh, the entryway here, this is the library portion and then you see the screen wall with the landscaping uh, that would be above it. And then we would give it some massing by putting in some four inch block every, every uh, I think four feet. Uh, the, uh, the detail around the windows here uh, would bring in quite a bit of light into the room and, and also uh, uh, allow for projects to be placed in there. And then the library uh, allows for the shelving to put around the perimeter wall. It opens up the middle of the room to where the librarian, whether she's one or she has an assistant, she can uh, scan the whole room without having to leave her post. And then uh, uh, the, the windows that would look out into the courtyard area in here, and then also the structural tree that we designed just in front of the librarian uh, as a focal point. Bettis Elementary. The requirements there were also a library, a six to eight classroom, the support spaces, but this particular one would be for early childhood, uh, pre-K area. Uh, the layout is very similar to the one you just saw. Uh, the, the, the change being that the restrooms uh, are between the classrooms. There would be a, a small restroom between each room, and then they also have the sink uh, that would help uh, keep the, the drinking fountain, and so it's a self-service classroom in that area. Uh, the library is very similar, the only change there being that the principal requested a research room uh, as part of that <coughs> configuration. Typical classroom. Okay. 
The beta site has its problems as well as a restriction. Uh, with the Scheidler Drive here, Rock, Rockwell, and uh, Retro Boulevard over here. The main entrance to the campus is here, the principal's office, library, the cafeteria, and the kitchen. Laid out very similar to A. And then you have the classroom wings in here, once again with portables and other permanent buildings placed in between. The mini gym is back here. Currently, what he's got for playground area is this triangular piece in here, this being a ditch that goes all the way across, this being a district warehouse area, and then he's got uh, this uh, uh, shaded pavilion here on this asphalt area at the front of the school. Mr. Martinez's request was that we uh, try and accommodate the building in here so that the play area here was not altered. Okay. The administration agreed to look at that and, and allow X number of feet to accommodate the building in here from the warehouse uh, property. Now, this is just, uh, we received the, the, the survey last week, and that will be the next slide, but we had just Googled it and placed the site on here to see how we could accommodate and, and what would fit and how it would fit. And so that's where we were running into some area of, of concern. Um, if you'll go back one more. Uh, well, okay. This being the warehouse here and here, and then this being the classroom wing. Next. Okay, here's the classroom wing and the two warehouse areas here. Uh, we have to stay 30 feet away from each of the buildings. So if this is 30 feet up to this corner, and we're 30 feet along here, uh, parallel to this one. But as you can see, the corner of the building down here is right on edge with the, with the ditch. So uh, we haven't met with administration yet on this particular one, but uh, we will have to look at uh, either recommending that they go with two less classrooms with their minimum, because this contains their maximum, and if that might be an option, or if he wants to relocate the library, you know, those are things we'll need to discuss in committee. Uh, Bennett, very similar, has a dark uh, brown brick and uh, painted walkways, concrete columns, brick infill, and then also the same type of window. This is the large asphalt play area at the front of the school, and we would be right in here, in this area, going backwards, or away from us. And the proposal is, is uh, very similar. You know, we've got the landscape courtyard with the library, uh, the bay windows, and, and then the, the brick that would match what's there at that campus, and then accented with, with block. Okay. Upon growth, the program requirements there would be 10 classrooms max, 8, mi eight minimum. The support spaces, and in this campus, is fourth and fifth grade. Uh, typical classroom areas here with uh, 700 square feet, angle entryways, the uh, cubby hole, teacher cabinets, and then on this corner we have uh, the support spaces, there's a book room, there's a teacher work room in this area, uh, faculty restrooms, and then the student area. Now this would tie back in to uh, wing C, which is the, the, the last classroom wing, and it would make the campus entirely enclosed. Typical classroom layout. Okay, this is the campus. This is their existing entry with uh, the library area here, administration, cafeteria, kitchen, and wing A, wing B. This is an asphalt area right in here. Uh, the older building is here along southmost, and then uh, some portables in this area. With, there was two areas that we considered. Uh, this one here along the front, and then this one back here. Once we took the measurements and uh, physical measurements and, and placed the wing and so forth, uh, this area, our wing back here would have come into this delivery area, so that was uh, eliminated early on. This is the PE gym back here. The district has also bought additional property in order to extend a bus uh, route uh, around the campus. So this is where uh, we've looked at placing the wing, uh, the 10 classrooms in here and then attaching here, which would be the, the central corridor to Wing B. Palm Grove, uh, I worked on Palm Grove when it was uh, originally designed so with Calvin Walker's office, and um, uh, we are maintaining the look on this campus, and the, the, the system of bay windows that it has, 
and uh, the brick color on the exterior. We're complementing all of that and just uh, condensing it a bit. Our windows will not be uh, this, this wide, but we are keeping the same look and including the recess area. Uh, each one is for a different classroom and, um, and then the school color in, in blue that they have currently. Dollar-wise, uh, I've broken down the cost estimate. This was budgeted at $120 a square foot, uh, the project. And what I've got here is three versions. We have the one where each school gets their maximum uh, in classroom space, which is 10, 8, and 10. And that one comes out to $5,250,480. Uh, and at, at that point, it puts me uh, 29, basically 30,000 over budget. If we go with each one of the, the uh, Eggly campus and the Palm Grove campus getting eight each, which is their minimum, and giving Bedis their maximum at eight, then uh, we are about 441,000 under budget. And if we go with the small one for each one, which is the eight, six, and eight, then we would be uh, roughly $677,000 uh, under budget. So those are items that we're going to have to review and see what's going to be the best fit for the district. We had discussed that we would draw the, the, the minimum uh, as a base bid for each one of the campuses and then the two extra classrooms as an ad alternate. Okay. Uh, Canales Elementary School, I have two sets of program requirements here. Uh, on this particular one, this is what the principal at a first meeting was her main request. That we have 30 classrooms, two computer labs, a science lab, and um, two special education classrooms. And the support spaces would include an assistant principal's office, teacher's lounge, and it was for pre-K through five. And this is done. Okay. So then, once we put in the dollar figures and uh, laid out a plan and so forth, uh, we, we saw that that would not meet the budget. So we scaled back and what we can meet is 20 classrooms, one computer lab, one science, two special education classrooms, the support spaces, and then pre-K through third grade. Okay, on this particular plan, uh, over here to, to the, um, let me borrow that budget. is where the teacher's lounge and the assistant principals are. And then the classrooms working back, uh, we've got the ones that are the 800 square feet on the top and the bottom so that we could uh, make it symmetrical. And then all the 700 ones in the middle with the back having the computer lab and the special education and the science lab. And then the, the, the portion that projects out is the mechanical area. The, the classrooms themselves are all basically uh, uh, the standard is we showed earlier mm -hmm. uh, with the, the typical layout that we have with the cubby holes, the marker board, the tack boards, and so forth. And then uh, this particular one, what we're looking at is uh, the, the campus is bounded by international grants. The lead drive is already an in-house or campus drive. It's not a public street anymore. And then Cleveland or the, the upper right there. And the, uh, the building, the, the white building here that's off to an angle in front of that huge open area, that was built a few years ago. That is now their administration and their library. And uh, the little building in front of it was, um, or is, the nursing building. Uh, the other areas contain, the, the long rectangulars contain the classroom wing for different grade levels, and then the larger block here near Cleveland is the cafeteria and the kitchen. The angled wings down here at the bottom are all barracks type that are on concrete and those are scheduled to be demolished. Now those are not a part of our contract but we are looking at that long term as to how it would affect the campus. There are some smaller buildings that you see uh, on below Lee Drive that angle uh, differently and those the principal has asked to keep those and she, she said that they would use them for storage or music, other activities that she needs to house but the remaining. There's a lot of large mature trees in that area. It's, it's a very nicely landscaped area, so we want to make use of that eventually. And we plan to create a, a master plan for this as, as time allows. But the parking area down here for the faculty, and then the parking area uh, uh, towards uh, Cleveland. Currently, the, the bus and the parent drop-off is along Cleveland. They do not enter the campus. 
Thanks. Our proposal is to put the, the 20 classrooms and the, the uh, support spaces behind the main administration building for control. And the future growth would be either towards international or if we revise all of the parking eventually uh, over here towards Lee Drive, uh, remove that parking. And our goal was to relocate that so that the buses could drop off on Lee Drive and, and uh, uh, adjacent to the building and then leave mom and dad or the parents up towards the, where the cafeteria is now and relocate the other buildings. But we haven't gone to that extent. Our goal here has been so far just to make sure that we can accommodate as many students. Currently, it looks like what we can do is accommodate pre-K and third. This is the, the administration building with the library. And then these are the older buildings that, that, uh, that face toward uh, international. There is quite a bit of ponding of water or flooding, especially along the wings that are uh, near the corner of Cleveland and International. So uh, Ms. Boy said that this is a, a large problem that she has. The elevations that we have here, uh, along the bottom one, is for the administration. Uh, this is the principal and the teacher's lounge would be the classroom and works in back. And then the side over here would be the entry for the buses. Uh, this is face. What we did is we picked up all the details that are there in, in some of the adjacent buildings. And there's a very neat little uh, building that houses the nurse. And there's a, a very intense brick red uh, that is used for that particular building. I don't know what year it was built, but it's, it's, it's a really nice building. Administration has remodeled it into a nursing facility, and it's very nice. We're going to keep that. And so we wanted to play off of that brick and then use the detailing around the, the remainder of, of this particular so that we can have something to tie into. Cost-wise, when we look at the 30 classrooms, we're almost a million dollars over budget. That was her dream list. And so what we can afford and be slightly under budget is the 20 classrooms and then phase the project uh, for a future completion of it. Okay. If there are any questions, I, I do thank you for your time. Yes, sir. The rear portion of that building was too close to the drainage. Is there a way, Oscar, that uh, you need those, that warehouse there and that uh, particular site plan? Or can you demolish half of that building so that way the architect cannot eliminate part of the uh, library? Okay, my, I, I was not going to eliminate it. That's not for me to do. But I said that we could relocate the library. One of the things that we had discussed was that we might increase the existing one. I, I don't know if Mr. Martinez would like a new one, you know, uh, or to in, increase the existing one, but it would either relocate the library if he wanted the classrooms there, because he's insistent that the classrooms have to go there. Now, if, if he's okay with relocating the library somewhere else, we could look at that. Now, that would increase cost, and now I have two separate buildings on one site, but that would be up to him or uh, the option of deleting two classrooms in order to fit that, but keeping the library. Do you need those warehouses there, Oscar? They've been there for a long time. Oh, what are they? What's the storage in there? The facility, and I don't know if Chris if you can go back to it. We have a, a Rockwell warehouse that is used by our fixed asset and textbooks department, um, and we're not planning to demolish that anytime soon. The rest of the building that's there is an old maintenance compound that has. Uh, uh, they have some gravel and cement and sand. They do welding and fencing. And th those are the, the facilities that we are going to take up about a third of that property. Um, you don't have, do you have a pointer, Hector? Uh, what about the other one? Or that works with the other laptop? No? That, that worked? Can you help us out here with the pointer? Yeah, with the laser. That's the wrong campus, I think. All 
right there. The white building is the one that would stay. Everything below it, underneath it, is, is really just a bunch of junk. It's not even a true building. Surprise how it's even stood there. So we, we are going to demolish about a third, maybe even up to a half of that area below the white building. The next slide, please. Yes, so right there, just left of that new wing that's proposed, we're going to take up about 30 feet to the left, right there where he's saying we're going to demolish that. So, so it'll fit. Well, we'd actually have to do that before we even start the building. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we were looking at possibly including that in his contract. So whoever the general contractor is, he'll be doing the cleanup and staging. Uh, the good thing about this, and it depends how our budget is. If not, we're going to have to get maintenance to help us or a contractor to do get in there beforehand. But the good thing about this thing here that we like, uh, one of the biggest problems, no matter how small a project we do on any campus, is it's a very big inconvenience to the, the principal, and they're always complaining and the safety fence fell down, and kids are going in there, and there's sand blowing, and, and contractors are looking funny at the teachers, and I mean, we get all kinds of problems no matter what, what happens. Um, so we hate being inside the campus. Uh, I don't want to split up the library and the wing, because now we're going to have two construction sites in two different areas, and it's just going to be a nightmare. And the workers are going to be going back and forth, and kids cutting through there. The good thing about this is that we can have the contractor access the site from Rockwell, that way, screen it in, and they don't have to go into the campus at all. <clears throat> so we are going to have to be coming in through there. And uh, a lot of that stuff that's being demolished are not really buildings. They're just you know, little block walls where there's sand for the maintenance department to use. So it would be very easy to clean it out. And there's a cedar fence. The whole building, because we have that white building? Because our maintenance department has nowhere else to, to send the welders and fencing crews. That's where they operate out of. That, that's a future, a year and a half down the road, we're going to be building. If the board approves fun, monies for a warehouse to relocate our central warehouse and maintenance department behind the main building, where our board meetings are in the back, um, not this board meeting, but the following one, there's going to be a budget taken to them. It's going to be 15 to 18 million, somewhere around there. Uh, we don't know if the board's going to say yes or no. If they say yes, then we're going to hire an architect to design those buildings. And I would say in about a year and three months to a year and six months, we can move to those new facilities. In those new facilities, we'll have room for the textbooks. And then we can knock this whole, and, and those, those maintenance uh, shops there will also go to the new campus, I mean to the new uh, uh, complex, warehouse and maintenance. So once that happens, it's very possible that within a year or a year and a half to two years, all this on the left will be demolished and just be, be given all to the new school. We, we just can't knock it down until the new building's built, which will be a year and a half from now, two years from now. We, we knock this one down, we have no bird to put all the textbooks. Just that warehouse. I'm not talking about the one in the south. Just where the welders are. There's no way we can relocate those employees where the bus going is on the Dana Street. We could, but we'd have to build them new facilities. There's no space right now for them to work out of. And we got buses on the dirt and the caliche, and they're asking for asphalt and concrete to park their buses, and they're just all over the place. And we'd have to build a new facility for them, and restrooms and shops and and all that. It, it's, not, it's not something that can be done right away. So the way it is right now, that, that, that new construction <coughs> building does meet the minimum uh, requirement, the distance of this building, right? Which is 30 feet, like I said, you mentioned a little while ago. The way it is right now. Oh, if, if you straighten this up that way? Yes. That's what, on that one right there, it's close. This one's close to the ditch here. Okay. Uh, and uh, then if we won't get any further this way, then we're too close to this one. Oh. 
And that was, this is the minimum that we can have, so we're already there. Okay. And so then we're, we're already uh, within the ditch down here. That's, that's why I couldn't shift this one further up. And we may want to look at the building code, but if you don't have any openings or windows, you can probably get even down as, as far as close as 10 feet. If you don't have window openings, you can get closer. Uh, Mr. Gomez is our, our building official. He can help us research that. You want to demolish the warehouse? <laughs> it's going to happen, hopefully, but it probably won't be till about a year and a half, or a year and a half from now. But I still think we can accommodate this this wing this wing in this in this area. Uh, we didn't want to go up in front where the big playground area is because the principal says that's the only playground area I have. Please don't take my playground away. So. We're pretty much stuck to this this area. There's no there is no other site down at the bottom where that little mini gym is. That's their little playground right there. You can't even get a vehicle or nothing in there. It's just it just doesn't work very well. And that's where we are. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, I believe on Egli and Perez you have the zigzag design at the end just for uh, aesthetic looks and landscaping, but I think on these campuses, I think if the whole goal is to give get more space and provide improved facilities for the students, and it would probably be better in my mind just to square it off, save on the material, you get more space, and you could probably do some simple landscaping, and you still get more room for the students and well, the faculty. We, we have met the requirement here in this space. Yeah, but when, when you when you do that zigzag design, there's costs involved, and then you said the landscaping, and I, I've heard from some people we talked to that, you know, they're real tight on budgeting, maintenance, and cost, and they're down to, you know, very few people to take care of the campus. And even when we were at Ben Bright, um, even the landscaping wasn't as well taken care of it as you think it would be because, you know, people are tight on cost and, and et cetera. So maybe just something to consider. We will. We'll, we'll put a pencil to that. There's no other questions. The bond committee can resume back on their. their uh, they'll be demolished, but we got to wait till the new wing's built. Or again, we'll have to bring in portables. Well, why do that if we already have the wings there? But all those long wings like that is an old housing project that was given, sold to the district in the 1950s. And we've been using it as a school, but originally it was a housing project. But they will be demolished when the new wings built. Mr. Garcia, Mr. Knowles, on behalf of the the bond oversight committee, I want to thank you all for your work with the existing schools. Uh, we sometimes lose sight of the fact that it's probably a more difficult task to uh, keep uh, the historical uh, uh, aspects of the schools that you're adding on to, and uh, the, the children who go to those schools uh, will appreciate the hard work that you put into it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any old business at this time? Is there any new business other than uh, the nominating committee who was already appointed? Please, uh, on, that, on that issue, uh, Mr. Vice Chairman, uh, if you would lead that committee uh, and if you would please uh, make sure that you have uh, a slate, that you meet and have a slate of officers by the end of this month so that uh, the agenda will reflect uh, the nominees uh, from the committee and so that we can vote on that at the next meeting, which will be the first Thursday of December. Do you want the names to be? You know, I don't know if we need the names on there. I just uh, really, I, I kind of misspoke. What I meant to say was make sure that you coordinate with uh, Mr. Tapia's office to include the voting on the nominees that you have selected at our next meeting. That's probably a better way to do it unless you think otherwise. Anybody have any comments with respect to the nominations for new officers? Do you have any public comment? 
Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Oh, yes, Mr. Tapia. I'd like to make one, one comment. Uh, you know, we've been bouncing around in our meetings and finally came here. We tried it on the stage. It didn't work too well. Came up with this setup here today. Does this work for you or, Juliana, uh, if you need to talk to Mr. Farias over here, is that too far for you? Does this work or do you want to try something different? Or was it, does this work uh, for, do you think this will work for all our future meetings? You're talking about the old police, the, the police department area? The board. Where were we in the board? The boardroom. Yeah, well, we can't use the boardroom because uh, they they use it all the time for different meetings, and sometimes they conflict. And if we conflict, we may get bumped off and someone else, and then we have to find an alternative location. But I think we have what three or four weeks left of football. So by the time we meet in December, football season may be over, and we won't have this traffic problem. So that should be solved uh, until next football season, but uh, does, this, does this layout work for you? Well, I think I'm hearing that it's not necessarily the best, but we know that for the videographers and the um, technical people, they've told us that this is the best place for us to meet. And uh, Let's give it another month and let's work at it again, and hopefully we can try to work out some of the kinks. Uh, that would be my opinion. I agree with uh, Mike. Let's give it a try for another month or two, and I think it's the communication is always there. Uh, we can raise your hand, and say, Arturo, are you there? Yeah, it's over there. You say we can communicate. Well, There's no the, problem. At all. The only comment I have is when you have presentations like this, then I guess this format is is good. But if we don't have presentations like this, we need to have a way to look at each other. Cause right. It's kind of, That's that was my the, concern. The format doesn't work where I can't see anybody. If there's no if there is no uh, presentation that's going to be made, then we can set it, up we can set it back up on the stage, and that way we were facing each other the last time. We okay. can do that. We'll do that. Mr. Hansen has a couple of comments. Yeah, yes, I, I have some comments. The, the first one was in the bylaws that I received uh, last month as a new member. Uh, I read that we're supposed to get an update every monthly or every month on the uh, expenses, investments, balances, and the uh, bond proceeds. I did get copies of what was spent to date as of June, and I did know some of the architects were showing what their, what their uh, budgets are and what their estimated cost would be for different options, but I think it would be good, or at least I'd like to make a request if we could get a monthly uh, one-page overview, or at least for each of the uh, uh, propositions that were approved, uh, a general summary of what's approved and spent to date, and, you know, on the land, on the, on the contracts, and, and uh, et cetera. That's a very good point. As a matter of fact, uh, prior to you taking uh, your position on the board, we had been receiving monthly updates, I think, through July. Uh, and I don't know why that stopped, and that's a good point. Mr. Holtzman actually brought that up, I believe, at our second meeting in February. Right. And, uh, we need to make sure, Mr. Tapia, that uh, that is given to us on a monthly basis. That is, that's our primary goal here with this committee to make sure that the, uh, we have oversight with respect to the bond funds, and and uh, we just need to. We, I want to reiterate again that that we have uh, a copy of all the expenditures to date every month for the meeting. Uh, sure, and we were giving them to you, or we're developing developing the agendas. Uh, as you can tell, we knew we knew we were in for a long meeting. Uh, so if we added that on there, we're just going to add probably more discussion, another 30 minutes, 40 minutes to the meeting. So uh, we decided just to do the presentations. But definitely at the, all the following meetings, uh, we'll definitely have them for you. And that's a, and that's a, that's a good point. However, let me, let me unless I, I hear objections from the committee, uh, I think it's more important for the committee. And that you, you all did not necessarily know this, and so I don't have... I don't have a, I'm not quarreling with your decision with respect to today's agenda. However, going forward from here on out, uh, our overview of the expenditure of the funds is the single most important aspect of our function. And so if we need to cut something out, let's not cut that out. Let's cut uh, another presentation out or something for future reference. But that's correct. We'll make that a, a part of the standard, uh, the old business, new business, financial, and then whatever else is on the program. We'll, definitely, we'll definitely do that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, my, my second uh, comment pertains to uh, maybe uh, uh, the next meeting, if we can cover. I noticed we 
we've covered propositions one, four, and, and uh, two in the last couple meetings, and the, the largest one, which is high school number six, proposition number three, the $50 million bond. Um, I noticed uh, some review in the board meeting last month with the trustees, but I think it'd be good if we spent a little time as a group on that one and, and really review and update on that project, because I, I think that goes out a bit in probably February, February, March, and March. So it'd be good to really spend some time on that one instead of going quickly through it, because I think that's a, probably the largest project we, we have to take a look at. All right. Let's get that on the next agenda. Uh, Mr. Holzman? Yeah, I was at the, uh, the board meeting recently in which the several of the schools were presented, including, including the high school. And uh, it's, it really looks like a terrific job that's being done as far as design work and, and what, what's being done. So uh, I'd like to see more of that, but that's the report I can make to this committee that I was at that meeting saw the presentations that were there, and they were very good. Thank you. Any other comments? I think the rubber's going to meet the road here, really with respect to this committee, when we start seeing major expenditure of funds, and we're going to have to all uh, remain vigilant with respect to our duties uh, and the oversight of the expenditure of those funds. I think that's what the board want, the trustees want. I think the administration wants that, and I know the public wants that. And so. Uh, Without any further ado, if I entertain a motion to adjourn. In a second? second All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.